Hello, my friends. This is my last random rotation video for this year. And I want to start by saying thank you very much. Thanks for watching my content through over the last 12 months. I'm not gonna lie. This year was everything but easy. For a couple of weeks, it almost felt like my business went completely down. But luckily, that is slowly recovering now and I can't wait to see what 2022 has got for us. What I can say for sure is that I'll keep uploading videos to this channel and also I'm already working on some really nice projects outside of random rotation that I want to share with you all once there is something worth sharing. If you don't want to miss that, simply subscribe. Hello and welcome here on Random Rotation. I hope you're all doing well. Now, I have one last quick After Effects tutorial for you. In 2022, I want to use a new intro logo animation thing. Nothing super complicated, but let's build it together right now. Here in After Effects, I first need to create a new composition and I can do so by simply clicking on this cute button here. And I call it Logo Animation. It's set to Full HD, which is good. And it's 10 seconds long right now. I think it will be shorter in the end, but I don't need to change that now. So I simply click on OK. And now I can drag my logo random rotation.png file from the project window over here down into the composition like so. It is a little bit too big right now, but no problem. We can easily change that in the transform settings of this layer. 35 should work fine. Cool, and now I deselect the layer by clicking in the empty space because I want to create a shape layer using the rectangle tool. But first let me show you what happens when a layer is selected. So I select the layer again, the rectangle tool is still active and now I draw something on here and you can see it creates a mask on the selected layer. I don't want that right now, so I simply delete this mask, deselect, the layer and now I can draw my rectangle and that creates the shape layer one, which is exactly what I want. And now I work with simple keyframing in the transform settings. I want to keyframe the position of this shape layer. And so I set my first keyframe here at the two second mark and my second keyframe is at frame number zero and I drag the shape layer all the way up like so. And this is what we got so far, a simple downward movement of this white shape layer. Oh boy, how often have I said shape layer by now? Can somebody please count that? Okay, next I wanna add a distort effect turbulent displays. Here it is. Oh, I think it is a little hard to see. Let me show you that on black better. And now I jump over into the effect control settings. I bump the amount up to 80, change the displacement to twist. And I think, well, maybe just a little bit more and that's it. I'm happy with that. That's what I would call a pretty nice liquid effect. Like paint dripping off a wall. One more time. Yes, and now I duplicate the layer and I offset this new layer by six frames. And I give it a different color, something like this. And this is what we got so far, looking nice. Now I bring up my logo layer to the top and I click on this toggle switches modes button down here because I wanna change the blend mode to stencil alpha and now watch what happens. Cool, right? 
yeah, that is what I wanted. I like the colors, like the reveal. I bring my transparency grid back now and select all three layers, right click or command click on the Mac, pre-compose and give it the name logo, deselect it. And now I work with the rectangle tool again. I draw a rectangle like so. And color wise, I want it to be pretty dark, almost black, dark gray. And now it's time to set some keyframes again. Once again, I work with pretty simple position keyframes. I go to frame 12, set my first keyframe, that's the end position. And on the very first frame, I pull this over to the right and that automatically creates the second keyframe. That's our movement. I think it looks better with motion blur on. You can see the difference between motion blur on and off right there. See? I think it's good with motion blur on. Cool. And now I duplicate this layer. I offset it by six frames. And even though it seems like nothing has changed, there is a second rectangle coming in. That is what these thin blue lines represent. All we need to do now is to change the position of this second rectangle, but we don't do it by changing its actual position. We just change the anchor point because that way we don't mess up the animation. Yeah, this looks about right. Okay, and now I can duplicate it one more time. Let me collapse this. And this will again be offset by six more frames. And again, I change the anchor point. And now this is looking like I want it to. Fine. Next, I want to find a good starting point for my logo animation. I think let's let's try frame 19. I just pull it over and then I need to bring it to the top. Otherwise, we won't see it because it's hidden under the shape layers. Um, let's see. Mm, I think that can come in earlier. We try frame 15. Yes, way better. Just four frames, but it already looks a lot more pleasing. For my eyes, at least. And hey, it's for my channel, so my eyes are the judge. Next, I want to add an effect from Raw Byte. It's called Bat TV. There it is. And I want to animate the signal distortion and the horizontal sync. So I select the layer and click on U. That's the shortcut to only show the parameters that have keyframes. Pretty neat little shortcut. One of my favorites actually, because it can get pretty confusing quickly here in After Effects if you don't take care of your keyframes. I go forward two frames and then I bump up the signal distortion to 100 and the horizontal sync to, I don't know, let's try 77. Two frames forward and I'm going back to zero. Let's see what we got. Mm. Well, maybe we can lower this a bit. 65. Oh yeah, that's better. Just a little grip. And now just to get the timing right, I watch the whole animation again. Cool. And so now it's time to animate everything out again. 
I go to the fourth second and I once again click in the empty space and work with the rectangle tool like so and you probably already guessed it we now need the turbulent displays effect again I change the displacement type to twist bump it up to 80 and now I drag it over to the current frame and animate the position again here I set my first keyframe and then I go forward let's say two seconds and now I move this shape layer down 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 all the way down but to see what it's actually doing, we need to change the blend mode from normal to, once again, stencil alpha. Voila! This is the effect I was going for. I think it could use a little bit of motion blur. Can activate it here can see it's it's not that hard edge that we had before that's what changed yeah that's my animation let's watch it through and animating out yeah I'm happy with that nice little animation that I can use in my videos for 2022 just to round things up I can trim the comp to this work area and all that's left to do now is to render it out and use it. That's it. <laughs> and now let's watch it one last time. Beautiful. Hey, it's me again real quick. <laughs> I forgot something. If you're like me and you want to use that same animation for two different logos. In my example, the random rotation logo and the Tobias Reimer logo. That's basically the same, but for my German channel. Then hold Alt and drag and drop it onto that original logo layer. That replaces it. Easy, right? Now have fun with these techniques. And if you like, then share your results with me and that my friends is it for this week i really hope you liked it and if so thank you very very much i see you in my next video and until then stay safe and motivated bye for now